My name is Emily Remit, and the title of my performance is American Melting Pot or Mosaic, The Right to a Specialized Bilingual Education. I owe the animal boot to doubt. I don't understand any of my homework. Yesterday, this woman came into my family laundry. She had blonde hair, blue eyeshadow, wore long white gloves and pearls around her neck. She waved a slim cigarette in the air and walked like a queen across the mats. She even left $10, a whole day's earning in her tip jar. I decided at that moment that I want to grow up like her. I want to be like her, but how? I'm just a little Chinese first grade girl living in this huge city of San Francisco whose family doesn't make any money. At my school, Jean Parker Elementary, me and 2,800 other Chinese speaking immigrants can't understand our English speaking teachers. I can't imagine how hard it is for the high schoolers who have been going to school for 10 years now and still don't understand a thing. Many have become dropouts now, filling our Chinatown streets with crime and delinquency, and I don't blame them. They have nothing to look forward to. I don't have anything to look forward to. When will this cycle of oppression end? But guess what? This man, Mr. Wang, came into my family laundry the other day. He says he has new ideas to help us learn. He says that us immigrants deserve a bilingual education, a system where we learn in our primary language, Chinese, and gradually learn English to catch up. I couldn't agree more. We deserve that an equal education. But how will this happen? My principal certainly doesn't think so. That big fat Italian man screaming at us, you chinks are no better than the rest of us and don't deserve any treatment. You either sink or you swim. It's like we're doing so much harm to our school, speaking in our own language. There are some people like Mr. Wei who view America as a melting, as a mosaic, a quilt of cultures sewn up together. <laughs> then are, there are those against bilingual education, those who view America as a melting pot, a place where historical and cultural differences are lost, melted away <sighs> when immigrants come to America. They view bilingual education as a threat to the unity and identity of America, and I'm just tired of it. All I know is that I deserve an education. I don't understand anything now, including this homework, and I need to catch up. Isn't this the land of immigrants? How were immigrants taught before this point in, 19, in 1969? Bilingual education has been a major facet of American education since the beginning. In the 1600s, bilingual education was first used by Polish, in the 1600s, by Polish parents who demanded for their children to be educated. Later, bilingual education was authorized for use in more than 15 states. However, these positive feelings towards bilingual education slowly decreased as whites cut off the rights of Native Americans during the westward expansion. These negative attitudes continued in times of international conflict and competition. For example, in World War I in 1917, many schools questioned the loyalty of non-English speakers. Many schools cut the study of German. Mobs raided schools, burned German textbooks. By the mid-1920s, Bilingual education was dismantled throughout the entire country. It wasn't until the 1950s when Spanish-speaking Cubans fled to Florida after the rise of Fidel Castro did bilingual education start to rise again in popularity. As bilingual education rose in popularity, the Bilingual Act of 1968 was enacted, 
providing federal funds to schools like mine to, to provide native language instruction. But it's 1972, and despite the Bilingual Act, we're still not being educated in our own language. Since Mr. Wang visited my family laundromat, me, my friend Kenny, and eight other students represented all Chinese immigrants in a class action suit against the San Francisco School District. We've lost twice so far, but today is the day the Supreme Court will hear arguments. If we win, not only will we be given our natural rights, but Hispanic students, Polish students, Italian students, all language minorities will. Everyone, whether listed or not, will be bound by the court's decision. Us, the plaintiffs for bilingual education, argue that our equal education under the 14th Amendment rights are being violated, that no state shall abridge the privileges or immunities of any citizens of the United States. On the other side, the school district and opponents against bilingual education argue that bilingual education is a privilege, not a right, and that the 14th Amendment does not require the elimination of all differences of people of all backgrounds. Also, the school district wants its right to provide its own priorities for its instruction. Under these state-imposed standards, there is no equality of treatment by merely providing students with the same facilities, teachers, textbooks, and curriculum. For students who do not understand English are effectively foreclosed from any meaningful education. The lower court is reversed. Feijun Hao, we won! The Supreme Court ruled on the side of bilingual education. <sighs> uh, August 21st, 1974. It will be a day that will live on. But now what? How do we pick a bilingual education program that will guarantee success? Is the state responsible for implementation instead of the school district who failed, obviously, to protect our rights? Or is it the parents' responsibility also, how do we even get the money to provide for these programs? It's now 2004, 30 years after the Lau vs. Nichols court case. And even now, in times of international conflict and competition, questions to continue to rise again and again over the rights and responsibilities of bilingual education. Our nation will always be a mosaic of tiles, building into the nation of immigrants I call America. After all, look at me. Ik ben Americaner. Soy Americano. I am an American. <laughs>